On today's Maker Business Profile, we're going to be talking to Aid Memoir Jewelry in Seattle. It's up to you, since you've already done okay. it twice now. Okay, so we'll start from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, start with who are you and who are you with? My name is Aaron Galligan, and my business is Aid Memoir Jewelry, um, and we make fine jewelry, accessible fine jewelry, um, using 100% recycled metals, uh, conflict-free diamonds, and fair trade gemstones. And we sort of specialize mostly in wedding and engagement rings. Wonderful. And you're supremely patient. This is our third time trying to record this due to computer problems. So thank you so much for your patience. <laughs> um, okay, so conflict-free uh, uh, diamonds and recycled metals. Tell me a little bit about that. How do you make jewelry from recycled metals? Are you talking about like aluminum cans and stuff? <laughs> yes, yeah, so we, for recycled metal, um, if you think about all those gold buying places that you see around, um, what they're doing is they're purchasing up gold and then they send it to, oh, lost you for a second there. That's fine. Um, they purchase the metal and then they send it to refiners. Um, and so if you're thinking about like 14 karat yellow gold, for example, it has um, gold, copper, silver, and zinc in it alloyed together. So those metals are all melted together and made into an alloy. So when they send all this different carotid gold to a refiner, the refiner is actually able to distill that out into all the pure metals. So you have pure gold, pure copper, pure, pure silver. Um, and then they take all that pure metal and they re-alloy it back together. And so the metal that I work with, it starts from 100% recycled source, but it's a newly refined metal. So it's, it's a clean, newly refined metal, um, but it started from a recycled source. Very cool. Okay. So... It, uh, tell us a little bit about the name, it, Aid Memoir. What What is that? Yeah, so Aid Memoir is a French term. It literally translates to be memory aid. So if you reverse it, memory aid, Aid Memoir. Um, and in French, that's used to refer to like notes that you would write down to jog your memory about something. Um, so in this instance, I use it to refer to jewelry. Um, I think that there's jewelry is really special because it's usually, especially fine jewelry, is given or used to commemorate a special occasion like a wedding, a birthday, a graduation, something like that. So. The idea with Aid Memoir is that it's the jewelry acts as a reminder of a special moment in your life. Okay. And if somebody wanted to learn more about you or see your jewelry, where could they find you online? Yeah. So you can go to our website, um, and I'll spell it for you. It's A-I-D-E-M-E-M-O-I-R-E -E -E jewelry.com. Cool. Um, I've got like business questions for you and questions about like how you got into all this, but maybe we could jump in and do a tour first and then I could ask you all those questions. Pardon the quick interruption here. We would love it if you would join us at make.co. We have a whole community system set up. If you become a member, you can talk to us behind the scenes, you know, recommend places for us to check out products for us to check out, people to interview, things like that. Again, that's make.co. Sign up for the community there. Get your membership today. Let's go back to this interview and tour. This is our front room, and this is where we meet with customers. Um, we meet on just by appointment, and we do private consultations. Um, so these are some of our other pieces of jewelry that we do. There's a window in the front room that looks into our studio space. Um, and so this is a little bit more of the space. And over here we have um, our case with all of our ring samples. So um, Yeah, get us in close there. Okay. All right. So this is um, one of our engagement rings. It's... Uh, has a stone with a prong setting and then a pave band to it. And 
than we do. Uh, this is Alexa. They, she just got a snack. Hi, Alexa. And she does our photo editing and social media. Um, and so then back here, that's Elena. And this is her space. She Elena is the... Um, studio coordinator, so she does a lot of the uh, um, packing and shipping and also correspondence with customers. So this is our shipping area where we keep all our shipping supplies and everything. Right. And so that's Elena's office. And then in here is my office. And this is where I do most of my work. Um, well, the designing part. Um, hard to type with a camera in your hand, isn't it? I know. Let's try that again. There we go. Um, so that ring that I just showed you, this is the CAD model of it. Um, so for most of the engagement rings I design in CAD, um, the program that I use is called Rhino Gold, and it's specific for jewelry. Um, the main thing with Rhino Gold is that they have stone this gem studio thing where you can put in a stone um just so you can build geometry around it so it's just sort of acts as a placeholder so i usually create the stone put the stones in and then design the piece around the stones okay so there's like a, a library of stones there's a library of stones yeah so um and there's different stones in here you can see you could do like a heart shaped stone, for example. Oh. And it automatically inputs that in there. Um, if there's a stone that you need that isn't in there, um, you just have to sort of build something um, for it just as a placeholder so you, you know the dimensions. And yeah, and you can also put in um, different stone um, dimensions to it too. Like say you have a stone that is weirdly tall or something, you can adjust uh, that here. And so, that, well. and then that'll adjust the stone. Cool. Yeah. So then I'll take you into the studio. This is the studio space. Uh, here just our jewelry studio so we've got tools all around and then um, let's see this is so we send our castings off which is really common for jewelers to do um, if you well, I would say some jewelers who do like really one-of-a-kind custom work will often cast themselves, but most jewelers that do production will send off their casting, uh, partially because it's, you need more equipment for casting in-house, but also the failure rate for casting is really high. So we send it off to professionals who just do casting and specialize in that. So that um, ring that I showed you that was the finished one and then the CAD model, this is what it looks like when we get it back from the caster. So this is what's called the sprue, and that's where the molten metal would go in to the mold to fill up the space. Um, so we would remove the sprue, clean it up, set the stones, um, do all that finish work on it. Um, I'm also working today on wax carving. So I showed you the CAD model, but this is um, another way that we do casting where we carve a wax out of it, and then we send the wax in and have that cast. Oh, cool. um, so to get my blanks for that, or sort of the beginning of the ring like this, I use this um, really funny tool that is from the 60s or something and hasn't changed since then, and it's a, a lathe. This is it. So here I'm making some different um, lengths and so you can see it sort of spins around and so I'm able to get a very regular wax blank with that. Oh, um, this is basically like a very fancy flex shaft. Both of these are, um, this one's, or sorry, rotary tool, like a, like a Dremel what is it called? Something. Yeah, like a Dremel. Yeah. Um, so we use a flex shaft or this is a micro motor 
and we use all these different little bits in there. Um, so this is what jewelers mostly use is these different rotary tool bits. This is called a burr and um, burrs are something that we use a lot in jewelry and they come in all different shapes. So here's a different shape burr. Um, this is a stone setting burr. So that's used to cut the seat um, and then our sanding drums. Uh, so this is my bench here. And then I also have a microscope. So we work under a microscope when we're doing the stone setting um, and most of the cleanup. We do almost everything under magnification. So the other option we use is this um, optivizer. So that's another magnification thing. Nice. Uh, oh, this is the hammer corn. Oh. A little hammer, hammer for a horn. Um, and then these are some of the other tools that we use. This is an engraving machine. We've got ring stretchers. This is a planisher, so its only job is to make things flat. Um, different types of tumblers. This is called a power hone, which we use to sharpen our gravers. Uh, we've got a buffy machine here. Right now, it's got scotch bright wheels on it, which the scotch bright wheels are... Oh, don't do what I just did. <laughs> if you're learning jewelry, never put your finger on a moving buffy machine. But I know how hard I can touch these to slow it down. Um, but this is a scotch bright wheel, and it's used to do like a matte finish. So it's similar to what you would get on the scrubby side of a sponge, but it's a lot coarser. Okay. Um, these are all of our polishing compounds. Um, the polishing compounds, each one has different buffs that go with each compound, so they all have to be separate. Okay. Um, this guy, all it does is bend metal, like bars of metal to make them rounded. Um, my assistant, June, who is at Penland right now, um, School of Crafts in North Carolina, she this is her stuff here and she does engraving this is an engraving ball and um this is a pneumatic device with like chisels to carve metal away and this is her bench she's got her own microscope here her own set of rotary tools and everything and then we've got our solder station here so the solder station um kind of messy but we use this stuff which is called flux and it's designed to keep the metal clean when we're soldering it soldering that we do as jewelers is similar to brazing it's just like a very tiny version of brazing very different than electrical soldering where you're actually bringing the metal up to almost melting temperature um, and then these are crock pots and they have a mild acid in it called pickle which is used to clean the metal it's similar to the acid that is um, in your pool and then this is the solder that we use let's see if i can get one of these open one-handed so let's see where are we here we are so this is the solder we cut off tiny little chips that are about a millimeter by a millimeter, sometimes smaller than that. Um, and with gold, you have to have a different solder for every color and carat of gold. Oh. And then this is the torch that we use. Um, it's a very tiny uh, propane and oxygen torch. So same thing that you would use for brazing or like oxyacetylene um, welding, but very, very tiny. That is tiny. <laughs> And so, yeah, that's the studio space. Oh, that's so cool. That's a nice looking space. I'm jealous. Okay, uh, so questions about the business and the history of the business and stuff like that. First off, um, earlier you mentioned the area you're sitting in now, you meet with people. Why do you meet with people? Yeah, because um, since we mostly do wedding and engagement, I feel like sitting down at a table and talking about the different options is a lot better than sort of just going into a store and browsing. Um, so the work that I make, the rings are all what we call bespoke. I mean, 
it's a term uh, that that means there's like a catalog of designs and then each one is made to order for you to your specifications so for example like that one ring that I was showing you um, we do that in sizes four to eleven um, and we do quarter sizes we can even do an eighth a size if somebody needs an eighth of a size um, we do it in like six or seven different metals, two different finishes, different stone options. So it's a specific design, but it's it's made with all these variations that you can choose to sort of customize it. Um, and so I just feel like being able to sit down with a couple and look at the samples and talk about customization options is a better way to go than just being able, just walking yeah. into a store. Um, because something in a store, it's more like, okay, yeah, I want that thing that's right there in the case versus this is we're really like making it unique for each person okay that makes sense actually that i get it i get it uh very cool okay so let's go into a little bit of history how did first off how did you get into making jewelry yeah so i started in undergrad um at virginia commonwealth university which is in richmond virginia and i first started in interior design um, but I was always more interested in making the like three-dimensional scale models than I was in the like flat design part or the idea of I don't know um, I don't know it just didn't appeal to me I wanted to like make things and so I switched into furniture design and woodworking um, and at the same time so that was in the crafts department um, and at the same time, I took a couple of metals classes that same semester and really fell in love with working with metal and also realized I was allergic to wood and sawdust. So metal seemed like a better option. So I switched again. Um, so I got my bachelor's in crafts with a study in metal smithing and jewelry. And then I did a two year fellowship program at Penland School of Crafts, which is in North Carolina, um, which is a workshop based school so anybody can take a class there and in my first year I studied um, textile ceramics woodworking blacksmithing um, printmaking oh painting letterpress so I did everything my first year I was able to like work in all the different studios and then in my second year I decided after trying out all these different things that I really love metal and so I went back to metal um, focused on metal, blacksmithing, jewelry, and other types of metal smithing in my second year. And then I went on to do a master's in fine arts at SUNY New Paltz, uh, which is State, Uni State University of New York at New Paltz. Um, so I have an MFA in metal. Nice. So <laughs> that's how you got into making jewelry. How did Aid Memoir start as a company? How did you go from a student with a considerable amount of... of stuff foundation how did you go from that to a company yes yeah, so I had made different types of jewelry over the years um, I did a lot of more like fashion jewelry lower end production and then I also did um, more like wearable sculpture so since my degree my master's was in fine art it was really more like sculptural pieces um, and I just felt like with that work uh, people would, it would go into exhibits, I would show it, sometimes people would buy it, and if they bought it, they put it on their wall or they put it in a drawer, they weren't really wearing that work around. And so it was really important to me to start making pieces that people would wear every day. Um, and so I think in 2012 was when I first started doing wedding bands, and, um, and I ended up just really loving it because I feel like a wedding band is sort of the most functional piece of jewelry. It's not, no jewelry is like a necessity, not like pottery, you know, making a cup or something. But, um, but a wedding band serves more of a function than just pure adornment. Um, and I love that it's something people are wearing every single day. So, um, yeah, so I ended up really enjoying doing wedding bands and I sort of um, stopped making the other work. I stopped making the art jewelry a few years ago. Um, and I stopped making lower end production, like fashion jewelry, because I just feel like with fine jewelry, um, working in 
precious metals, the pieces are more meaningful to people. So um, they're usually, you know, something that is very commemorative um, and also that it's something that people tend to wear longer, you know, in their lives versus fashion jewelry where maybe you buy something, wear it for a year and then get something else. That makes sense. So did you... To start out your studio, did you slowly build it up over time or did you have to like take out loans or get financing to like buy all the equipment and like <laughs> take a huge leap or I mean, how did how did you get from from point A to point B there? Yeah, so no, I just have um, I started out when I finished grad school, I had some money saved and I said, OK, I'm going to make a go of it doing jewelry full time. I should also say. Before grad school, I worked as a hairstylist as well. Um, so I did that part-time while I also made jewelry. And so after grad school, I said, okay, I don't want to do hair anymore. I just want to focus on making jewelry. Um, and I'm going to give myself until this money runs out to make it work. And, uh, <clears throat> and I was actually very close to running out of money and having to figure out something else. But um, then things really took off kind of at the very last minute and uh, and that was so that was in 2012 and so I've been doing that ever since and I never took out any loans for it it was just the money that I had saved up already mm -hmm. and then um, yeah I've built the studio and bought equipment as I've gone along um, I also had uh, like in my first or second year of business a pretty devastating burglary that uh, totally wiped me out so everything that I had bought and built up and a lot of tools that I had since I was an undergrad all were stolen. Oh, so horrible. I actually had to like build it up a second time. That's horrible. So how do you feel that your, um, well, your product and your company, I guess it's two questions. How do you feel that you've evolved during the course of being a business as opposed to just being an artist beforehand? Um, well, I feel like, I mean, my goal or my dream my entire life was to always have a business where I was selling things that I designed and made. Um, since, like, elementary school, that was an interest of mine. So I think I am, like, I'm very business-minded, and I also think about the business part as, like, I'm making something. Okay. So I'm, I'm very much a maker uh, like outside of this, I'm I'm making jewelry right now. I'm converting a van into a camper van. I like oh, nice. make quilts. I like do all sorts of stuff. So, business to me, the idea of making a business was interesting to me, and um, I see it as like a project and a challenge and like a skill to learn and all that stuff. So, uh, I think the biggest challenge though was that I went to school for fine art and not business, um, but I spend most of my time now like focusing on the business part of it so oh okay i mean that was that was my next question was what was like the biggest challenge that you feel and that makes sense that makes total sense so um this is a fun question i always like to ask is there a tool that you like really want like you lust after maybe you don't have a need for it financially at the moment or, or the budget for it but is there something that that you're craving yeah, I would say a laser welder would be the the tool that I want, but I can't really justify. Um, if we did a lot of repair work, a laser welder would sort of, at this point, it's kind of a necessity. Um, but they laser welders are around fifteen thousand, um, and they're well, I think they start at fifteen thousand, and they're just not something that is like something we need necessarily um but it does make the job much much easier yeah. and we would be able to do things with that that we can't do right now so it's always interesting hearing the different tools people like get their you know they get that twinkle in their eye you know when they're yeah <laughs> that's uh that's interesting um and then oh and i just got well the one that i think will change things a little bit is i just bought zbrush um and so that's a different type of cad modeling program um, that's a more sort of sculptural modeling program where Rhino, you're working with surfaces and curves, and it's much more like strict geometry. Um, and ZBrush is sort of like 
you're pushing and pulling clay in a way. And, um, and so that'll sort of open up some new options, I think, for me and design wise. So that's brand new. And I just got a Wacom tablet and Wacom tablet. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I'm pretty excited about that. That's so that a, was something. that's a really fun area to play with. If you're wanting to try this, <laughs> if anybody out there is wanting to try that and they can't afford ZBrush cause it's expensive and that's what you really need for a business. Um, there's a simplified version called Sculpt GL, which is free and you can do it in your browser. It's like, you couldn't do it, like you couldn't really use it for a business, it's not full featured enough, but if you just want to play with that kind of mushing around uh, clay oh, that's thing, cool. it's I, called Sculpt yeah. GL. That's all the questions that I have. Uh, before we go, real quick, if you wouldn't mind again, say how people could find you online uh, in case they want to learn more. Sure. It's Aid Memoir Jewelry. So that's A I D E M E M O I R E jewelry.com. Perfect. Thank you so much for being patient with me and all my computer problems and giving me multiple tours till I got it right. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll have this online soon. And um, awesome. thanks again. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Thank you. It was good talking to you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. They were so patient and man, that jewelry studio looks so cool. Uh, that's right down my alley. All that, all that, you know, fine stuff under the microscope and oh man, that was so cool. Anyway, I loved it. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to give us a thumbs up on this video. It really helps us. It helps tell YouTube that this is the kind of video you want to see from us and uh, subscribe so that you can get notified whenever we put out new videos.